Let's create some wood material. I've searched the internet for some high resolution wood images and this is what I've come up with. These are raw and unedited untileable textures. Photographs actually. Um, when you're searching for source images always try to find the largest files possible so you have something to work with. For wood, often you will find uh, nice images on manufacturers of wooden floors, parquet, laminate flooring or whatever. So here are some, some of the images I've found. All of these are useful, useful for creating textures. So sometimes you will even use images like doors or panels. Basically everything that has a large area of wood you can try to make tileable. So let's create a texture in Photoshop now. I'm going to show you how to create a nice mahogany texture. So I'm going to use this source image. I'm opening it up in Photoshop. It has a pretty nice high resolution. And we can try to create a tileable texture from it. So first create a new file, set the size pretty large so you can uh, have enough space to work in. And now select some of the boards, start by selecting one of the boards and copy it pasting the new file you just created. So we're going to create a tileable texture that emulates a few boards glued together. <clears throat> in a cabinet work, in furniture making, it is uh, very common to use multiple boards glued together instead of one large board. This gives structural stability to the wood and is also easier to create. Well, not easier, but cheaper. So, we're going to try to simulate just that. Select another board, copy, switch to the new document and paste. Put them next to each other like this. Let's pick another one. How about this? Copy, switch to this document and paste. Just gonna delete the upper edge here so it blends together better. Okay. What else can we use? Let's try this thin part over, over here on the top. And paste. So now select the first, first board you pasted here. Duplicate the layer. and move it down. Let's rotate it 180 degrees. Okay, I think that's enough to start with. Maybe one more of the thin board. Just copy the layer. I'm using Control Shift plus Alt and dragging, dragging it down. This makes a copy of this layer. Okay, 
let's merge the layers with wood together. Select all the layers and press Ctrl E. And now let's make a rectangular selection. Copy, create a new document and paste. So this is our base. This is what we're going to use as our texture. We just need to make it tileable. Okay, so I don't like this line here. Looks like a bad glue up, so I'm going to copy a small sliver from here and paste it over this line. Okay, looks good. Merge it down. Now let's try to make it tileable. So we don't really have to worry about it making tileable vertically, just need to fix the horizontal tiling. I'll show you. So if you use the offset filter now, um, set the horizontal offset to zero and change the vertical offset, you can see it's very hard to see the seam. It has, uh, it, it, is disappearing. It looks like the boards are just continuing. So we just need to fix the horizontal tiling. You will notice that when I increase the tiling horizontally, there is a seam in the middle here. So first select everything and copy. Now use the offset filter Try to get the seam about the middle of the image and press OK. Now paste. And let's try erasing some parts to blend it together. So select the eraser tool, increase the diameter and reduce the hardness. And just just to raise blending them together. Okay, that blended pretty nicely. See the seam is almost gone. Merge down this layer and let's fix some parts manually with the clone stamp tool. For example, this line here, I don't like it, I'm going to get rid of it. Just pick the source somewhere similar in the color and draw over it. What else? Over here, let's blend it smoothly. So I think the basic texture is ready. Let's try using the offset filter again. You can see no matter how much I offset it horizontally or vertically, the seams are not visible, so that means it's going to be tiling nicely in 3D Max. Okay, so let's let's save this image now. I like to save them as PNG files. So <clears throat> they do not lose quality when you edit them and save again. Let's name it mahogany natural. Save. Okay. Now let's create a reflection map from this image. It's pretty simple. Just duplicate the layer. I'm pressing Ctrl plus J for this. And use the black and white tool to, cre to create the black and white version of the image. We want to have some nice contrast here. Okay, and let's create more contrast by using the Curves tool. 
to make it more contrasty, create an S shape with the curve. This boosts the highlights and makes the shadows darker. So I think this is pretty good. Let's save it as mahogany black and white. And we're going to use this map as a reflect map and as the bump map as well. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to create some more variations of this texture. Simply duplicate the layer so you don't use the original one. And let's let's change the colors a bit. First, let's give it some more contrast. Okay. Now use the hue saturation tool. I brought it up by pressing Ctrl plus U. And let's change the sh uh, shift the hue a bit. Make it more yellow, a bit less saturated. Okay. So compared to previous version, this is nice. Let's make another one, duplicate the layer. Let's make this one darker. Use the curves tool again, bring it down to make it darker. That looks pretty good. Let's make another version. You can uh, Try creating a new layer and filling it with a color you like. For example, I'm going to use something like something more yellow like this. Creating a new layer, filling it with color, use the bucket tool and try the blending modes to see maybe you get some results you like. So this is pretty interesting, merge it down and maybe make it a bit less saturated. Okay, I'm going to lighten it a bit. Nice yellow tinted mahogany. So we have a few variations of our texture, I just save them. Honey. Mahogany dark. Mahogany medium. So now that we have our textures ready, let's try to create some wood material in 3D Max. For this demonstration I'm going to use this simple sideboard. I've set up the UV coordinates to have real world map size. Uh, it's pretty useful for materials like wood, where the size of grain uh, is essential to realism. So I'm going to show you how that works. So let's create a new VRA material. Set up the diffuse, diffuse slot as our mahogany medium map. And enable show in viewport. As you can see, the size is pretty small. To fix that, we will set the correct sizing with real-world scale. So enable real-world scale and look at the texture first. So let's go to our texture. And we need to estimate the rough size of the texture. So it looks like the board would be about one and a half meter long something like, I don't know, 120 centimeters high. 
So let's try that out. Set the size to 150 to 120. And I think it looks pretty reasonable. The size is something something like you would see <clears throat> on a real piece of furniture. So if the grain is too large, you can increase the size. I mean decrease the size. But this is not too realistic. The grain is too small now, so let's stick to the first my first estimate of 150 to 120. So when you use this material on other objects with uh, real-world map size enabled, it will scale the grain correctly. Okay, so we've set up our diffuse map. Let's make a render. So our diffuse looks pretty good. I think we can move on to the reflect slot. I'm going to show you a real-world example of piece of wooden furniture up close. So look at the reflective area over here. You can see that the wood is not reflecting evenly. So this is reflecting more and the dark lines are reflecting less. So this is where our black and white mahogany map comes into play. So let's assign it as the reflect map. set up the correct real-world size and look at the material preview. You can see that some parts are reflecting more and some parts are reflecting less. So if you look at the texture, we made the dark lines darker and the brighter parts brighter. So this should simulate this effect pretty well. One more thing you can notice looking at this image is that Wood, wood has frontal reflections. For example, this part that is facing perpendicularly to us is more reflective than this part that is facing directly towards us or, <clears throat> or parallel, parallel to our, our eyes. So let's enable frontal reflections and set the frontal IOR to something like 3.5. This is a normal value for wood, something between 3 or 4. Just experiment to get the result that seems seems good to your eye. Okay, let's reduce the reflection glossiness a bit and try a quick render. I already see that the reflections are too strong. This is not too realistic and also too contrasty. And there are two ways we can fix this. One is by changing our reflect map texture in Photoshop, making it less contrasty and darker, or we can fix it straight in the 3D Max. I'm going to do the second option now. This is more flexible and our source source texture is not changed. So to make the reflections weaker, we can mix the reflect color with the reflect map. So since our reflect map is too bright, let's set the reflect color to something like dark gray. Now to mix them together, go to the maps tab and change the reflect map value. If you set it to 50, it's going to use 50% of the reflect map and 50% of the reflect color. So if you set it to 80, it's going to use 80% of the reflect map and 20% of the reflect color. So I'm going to try a value of 50 and see how that looks. I think this looks better. Looks like a nicely lacquered mahogany sideboard.
If you wish to change the finish from high gloss lacquer to let's say um, <clears throat> more blurry oil finish, you can do that very simply by let's create a new material, let's copy this one actually and rename it to mahogany matte. So to make a matte finish you simply reduce the reflection glossiness. Let's try a value of 0 0.6 assign to our object and re-render. guess this is a bit too much. Let's try 0 0.75. This should work better. Okay, you can see that the reflections are much less sharp now. And it looks like a nice matte finish. One more step to make this material even more realistic. Let's go back to the glossy version. And we need to assign a bump map. Look at this photo. You can see that the uh, surface is not perfectly smooth, even on a finished piece of furniture. So we will simply copy our reflect map and paste it into the bump slot. Let's reduce the value something like 4 so the bump is not too strong. And when you look at the render, you can see some uh, bump in the reflections. So this makes it more, look more, more realistic. Okay, so that's basic, basic lacquered wood material and a basic matte wood material. To change the color you simply create multiple versions of the texture in Photoshop like we did and change the diffuse map. Nothing much to it. So for example if you wanted a lighter mahogany you would use our lighter honey mahogany texture we created. Like this. Simply change the texture and that's all that's needed for changing the color. You can even create colored versions in Photoshop by changing the hue. emulates a uh, dyed wood it has been colored basically you can use any color you like so while this material is nice it is a bit boring I'm going to show you an example of an uh, old old cabinet so look at this wood. Look at the nice pattern. Look look how the deeper parts are darker. All the profiles, all the carvings are darker. This wood looks uh, much more interesting than our simple lacquered mahogany. We can emulate this effect by using V-Ray Dirt Map. And I'm going to show you how to do it now. Copy the material to another slot. Mahogany antique. So let's try to create some darker, darker parts on our material. So to do that, we're going to use V-Ray Dirt Map. So click on the Diffuse Map and change it from Bitmap 
to V-Ray Dirt. Make sure you keep the old map as submap and move it from the radius slot to the unoccluded color slot. So let's look at the default, uh, how it looks with the default settings. So it already looks more interesting. You can see that these parts, these card parts are darker. Uh, the corners in the profiles are darker. It has a nice patina now. So maybe we don't want the dark parts to be as dark as in this example. So we can change the occluded color. This is the color that uh, controls how the dark parts look. We can change it to something like very dark brown. Okay, let's re-render a little piece to see how that changed. Okay, it looks more realistic now. It's not, it's not black, it's nice and brown. So if you wish to make this uh, V-Ray Dirt effect stronger, uh, there is no direct control that allows you to do that. Well, but there is a little trick you can use to achieve this effect. Uh, first, let's increase the subdivs to get a smoother result. And now go back to the material, to the upper level of the material, and copy the map from the diffuse slot. It is the V-Ray Dirt map. So we copy it, and now we just paste it into the same dirt map's unoccluded color slot. This kind of layers it one on top of other. So let's try to re-render. To see what has changed. So this is our first result. And here's going to be our second result with two weary dirt maps, one into each other. As you can see, here and here, the effect is getting stronger. You can make it even stronger by going deeper into the weary dirt map and pasting again. So basically you can layer as many of these as you want to get a very strong uh, antique effect. You can see the dark parts are much more intense now. Okay so this looks pretty nice. I'm going to show you how this material looks in the new Slate Material Editor, so you can better understand what's going on. So this is our material. It has a simple reflect map and a simple bump map. And into the diffuse slot goes one V-Ray Dirt material, another, 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 and finally our diffuse bitmap in the unoccluded slot of the last V-Ray dirt map. So basically there are four dirt maps layered to increase the effect four times. And to change, to change the texture, you simply change the unoccluded color of our last V-Ray dirt map. For example, if I select Mahogany Natural, I don't need to make 
any other changes and the whole material is changed to the I mean, mahogany natural. All the dirt effect is still going on. Simply the diffuse color has changed. Okay. Let's change it back. Back to our honey mahogany. And now I'm going to show you another trick. Go back to the compact material editor. And now I'm going to show you how to simulate worn edges on this material. So let's try to make it a bit blurrier and less reflective for older effect. So I'm going to render one version without the worn edges and then I'm going to show you how to add them. Okay, so this is how it looks right now. And let's create some worn edges. So as furniture gets old and is used a lot, sometimes the sharp outer edges get bumped against or scratched or whatever. So they lose their finish. So to do that, we're going to take our diffuse map, cut it, and assign new V-Ray Dirt map to the diffuse slot. Now paste our, paste our um, copy into the unoccluded slot, and set the occluded color as mahogany natural. So this this should simulate the fact that uh, the honey version is finished version and the natural version is without the finish. So we're going to use we're a dirt map to simulate that by <clears throat> So Weary Dirt works two ways. It can work on the inner corners or it can work on the outer corners. To simulate worn edges we need it to work on the outer corners. So there is an option for that. It's called Inward Normal. OK, let's enable it. So the occluded color will occur on the outer edges. Let's set a bright color as our occluded color to see how it looks. This is much, much, much too strong. Let's reduce the radius to 0 0.5. Okay, now you can see you can see the weary dirt working on the outer edges. Right now result, result looks uh, too even. And it is too strong on these parts over here. So sometimes when you want to create this effect, you might have to use two materials for it. Uh, one with a, without this effect for parts that cause glitches like, like this one here, and one with the effect for everything else. So I'm going to copy it. get rid of the red edges
and assign this new material without the effect to the inner parts of these panels. I'm just adding an edit poly modifier, selecting the faces that are causing problems. And setting the material ID as 3 in this case. Okay, so let's look at our test rendering. Re-render. Now you can see that the inner parts of the panel are not affected by this. Let's keep working on this material now. So let's try a larger radius, like one centimeter. This should work pretty well. I'm using the red color simply to demonstrate the effect. It's sometimes useful to choose a bright color so you can actually see what's going on with the V-Ray Dirt Map. Okay, so this looks pretty nice, but the results are too even. For this, we will use one of our dirt bitmaps. Uh, go to the radius slot, select bitmap, and select one of our dirty bitmaps. For example, this one. Okay, let's re-render. So, let's see how this bitmap looks. Okay. First, we probably want to invert it. Then we want to increase the RGB level to increase the contrast. So how the radius bitmap works in V-Ray Dirt Map? Uh, the white parts show the <coughs> dirt effect. The black parts are unaffected. Aha! Uh -huh. One more thing. Yes, we need to fix the size of our map. First of all, enable use real world scale and set size to something like 50 centimeters. So now the effect is much too weak. Uh, I guess I should try going back to the original original output settings, invert it back so the white parts are larger and set the RGB back to 1. Okay, yes. Let's increase contrast now. So the RGB level makes it brighter, while RGB offset gives it more contrast. Okay, this is looking good. I like it. So once we have a result that we like, we can change the red color to something more natural. I'm going to increase the subdivs for a smoother result and set the occluded color as our natural mahogany texture. Set the correct map size 
and try a quick render. adjust this a little bit. The effect is not seen because the color variation between the occluded color and unoccluded color is not too big. So let's mix our natural mahogany with the white color. So simply reduce the occluded color map value to let's say 90 or 80 and try again. So it looks like I've accidentally mixed it with the red color when in fact I should have changed the red to white or something other light colored. So I'm going to change the occluded color to something like this and mix it at 50. Okay, this looks good, so I'm going to render the whole, whole sideboard now. Looks pretty nice. So let's compare it to our clean version and with the worn edges. So that's a pretty nice antique material. If you go, want to go even one step further, uh, you cannot dust. I'm going to show you how to do it. So copy this material, your name, and what we're going to do is take this material we have right now and use it as the base material for V-Ray Blend material. Keep old material as submap, and we're going to add one simple coat material. Uh, create a V-Ray material in the coat material slot, leave the diffuse as gray, and increase the roughness to 0 0.8 for a nice dusty look. So right now it looks like this. It's blending 50% of the base material with 50% of the code material. What we want to do is blend the code material only on the surfaces that are facing up. Like, so dust usually settles on the surfaces that are pointing up. So that's what we want to simulate. So let's set up our blend amount as a fall off map. So change the fall of type to towards the way and try some different fall of directions. So the best one probably is world Z axis or the vertical axis. So right now it's working the wrong way. So we will flip it around. Okay, so now the dusty parts are on top and the clean parts are on the bottom. But the dust is blending too smoothly. This is where the mix curve comes in. I'm going to add a few points and change their position. Okay. As you can see, we can create a much sharper transition between the dusty parts and clean parts. You can change where the dust settles.
Uh, let's leave it as a corner for a sharper transition. And let's see how it looks. So it looks like I forgot to assign it to our object. So I'll drag and drop here. And let's re-render. You can see that all the parts that are facing up are now simply gray. Extremely dusty. So you can use this technique to add dust to any material. Simply use a V-Ray Blend material and a gray coat, gray coat material with fall off map as the blend amount. So if you don't want dust to be so dense, like it is now, you can change either the curve by bringing this up or you can reduce the brightness of the white color. I think this should be okay. It's still dusty, but you can see through it. You can see the base material. Just a tiny bit. So that's an example of an advanced wood material with uh, dark inner corners, uh, worn outer edges and dust on top of it. When you break it down into steps it's actually pretty simple, you just have to understand how, how these maps work. I've also prepared a couple of more textures for you. Uh, go to the wood textures. I have prepared the cherry texture in different color variations. I've prepared a maple texture. Also in different color variations. And I've prepared an oak texture. You can use these to create many variations. You can use these as they are right now. Or you can find some images on the Google image search and create your own textures. Here's a walnut. Pretty interesting. So that's it for wood materials.